We are now moving on to frame relay. So let's talk about uh, some of the details of frame relay. And then uh, later on, we'll do some configuration in the next video. So frame relay. So why do people like it? Basically because it is a good, cheaper alternative to getting a dedicated lease line. So it's a cheap WAN tech. Uh, it's been around for quite a while, so it's had a, a lot of following over the years. And one of its main features is it uses uh, PVCs, uh, which are identified by the data link connection identifier, which is a DELSI. The PVC being the virtual circuit, and the DELSI being the identifier. It, it's been around for a while, but it's starting to be phased out in favor of MPLS networks and VPN over the public internet and things like that. It's still quite popular though. Uh, one of the nice features of Frame Relay is when you go to do with the uh, go to deal with the billing side of it, uh, you can break it into smaller pieces than dedicated lines. So you can do four kilobit per second sections of uh, bandwidth versus uh, the 64 for a original leased line. It's also cheaper for the providers uh, because they can put multiple customers onto one connection or one circuit. And it's a layer two uh, technology that encapsulates layer three. So let's uh, dig into the PVC, the virtual circuit idea, a little bit more. So with Frame Relay uh, virtual circuits, they are really the definition of a connection between two DTEs. Now remember the DTE is on the customer side, so if I, I'll have one DTE at uh, Philadelphia and one DTE at Los Angeles, so then that connection between those two, that's your virtual circuit. And it's called a virtual circuit because uh, there's no dedicated connection. It's virtually switched inside the uh, provider's network. So there's two types of virtual circuits, actually. There's a switched and there's a permanent. The switched virtual circuit is created by sending messages to the network to bring up a circuit. So it's kind of like the dynamic version. And the permanent is uh, pre-configured by the provider uh, and is probably is the more common method. And so this is really like your static assignment. So you'll, you're going to see, I mentioned it in the last slide, or if you want to call it that. Uh, I, I wrote down PVC because that's really the most common methodology of doing it. You have the, uh, the permanent virtual circuit instead of the switched ones because providers want to have control over what circuits are brought up and, and torn down. So both of these are defined, both of these kinds uh, and all virtual circuits are defined by those DELCs that I mentioned. And a DELC is uh, provided by uh, the provider as well. DELCs are also locally significant, which is really important. So 
So the reason I'm saying that is because the del C number it's not like a uh, it's not like an identifier of the entire circuit. So if I have router one and router two, and then it goes through the mystery network. this connection as it goes through the network this whole connection between these two sides is not del C 100 or something like that it's not that way one router could have it configured as del C 102 and one router could have it configured as del C 252 it doesn't matter it's, it's locally significant between your router and the device the router that's on the provider side of that link. So it's really just an identifier on this link. And then inside the provider's network, it then knows what circuit that really is and where it needs to go. So your DELC numbers are local. Don't don't fuss about making sure that they're the same on each side. They're not most likely never going to be. So just be aware of that. Uh, you can also get multiple uh, virtual circuits on one physical line. And you can have several topologies. You can have the ever popular star or hub and spoke, if you want to call it that. You have a full mesh. And then you have partial mesh. So star is going to be your most popular. Full mesh is expensive. And partial mesh is going to be like your second, uh, second most popular kind. So the star is where you're going to have some sort of, uh, you know, central location like main office, and then you're going to have all these different spokes that go off, which are your remote locations. Uh, your full mesh is going to be very expensive because you're going to have to lease. If you have ten locations, you're going to have to lease. You know. Uh, a, a ton of different virtual circuits to interconnect them all. It's not cost effective, uh, but depending on the pop on the needs of the business, you know, maybe one, maybe Philadelphia and Los Angeles are, you know, the two big central offices. Well, maybe you'll have some sort of partial mesh between those two locations and something in the middle, and then the others are hubs and spokes off of that or something like that. So you could. That's why the partial mesh is maybe the the more it was more popular um, than doing full mesh because it's it's not as expensive, but you get some of the benefits of it depending on your topology design. So this all works based on ARP. It uses ARP to resolve your IP to Delsey. You can also do uh, inverse ARP. You can override it with uh, static mappings. And we'll see how all this works in the uh, configuration video. There's also the uh, local management interface or LMI. And the LMI is a uh, keep alive, or it has a keep alive, uh, which provides information about connections between the DTE and the DCE. Uh, it's every 10 seconds. And you can see it with a show, with a show command. Frame relay.
highlight LMI. Uh, LMI can also do multicasting and status messages and flow control and things like that. Within Frame Relay, or really any any sort of uh, ISP provided least connection that you're purchasing in some fashion, some virtual system, uh, you're going to have a committed information rate or a CIR. And your committed information rate is essentially your guaranteed bandwidth. You can also do bursting, which most providers allow now. So you can have a guaranteed bandwidth of 128 kilobit per second, but you could burst up to uh, 256 maybe. So if no one else is using the line and you need to, it'll let that traffic through. Uh, there's also a flow control system built into Frame Relay, uh, which is simple. It's not uh, does not do it per virtual circuit. It's just on the circuit itself uh, on the interface. So what it does is it sends a, a bit, and they're called. Let me blank this out. Let me draw some routers too. So what they're called is the um, forward explicit congestion notification bit or second bit. I'm not making this up. And the backward explicit congestion notification or beckon. So the second bit gets sent forward towards your destination. And the beckon bit gets sent uh, rearwards towards the network. When the bit is set to one, it's, it, that's the warning. It says there's congestion, be aware. Uh, and within that, there's a, another bit called the DE bit, or the discard eligible. And uh, that bit is set in the header. Uh, and when it's set to one, it identifies what traffic is lower priority, and the system can then drop that traffic if it needs to. So if we had some sort of problem here, and we were sending traffic from this side, on the left to this side on the right as we made our way across once we found out that there was a problem there would be a beckon that was sent and then a beckon and then in there you might also have the discard eligible turned on for the traffic that's moving along So what we'll do is uh, we'll get into some of that configuration uh, coming up here, and uh, we'll see a frame relay in operation.